So, in the last session, we had written our first shell program and we had seen how to debug shell programs. We put this minus x option and debug shell programs. Now, we will move on. A uh, most important part of any shell scripts writing a program even in a language like C is comments. Most of us do not mention in a comment exactly why a action is taken and most of us actually mention what is being done. Okay? For example, if I have a statement like i is incremented by 1, reasonable comment could be to say that move to the next parameter rather than saying that add i by 1. I mean you know you are adding 1 to i, so why should you say this as a comment? How does shell allow us to comment a code? Okay, let us see it with the example. So, we will look at this file called comments.sh. I hope you all know how to type this file. So, here it is. So, it tells you that if hash, the character hash is anywhere in the line, then it is treated as a comment. Whatever follows after that is treated as a comment. So, for example, in line number 1, we see that the hash is the very first character. Therefore, anything that is written on the line like this is a comment is taken to be a comment. In fact, it would be very nice if you can, it can have more than one hashes. So, if you see, you can have some, you can show your artistic talent by writing comments like this as given in this screen. The other way of writing a comment is, see you write a, a code and then you can give, try to briefly explain what it does. So, here I have just said hash comment and as I told you this is just to the line number 9 is just to show you that this hash can be anywhere in the line and that is treated as a comment. So, in order to show that this program will work, I will put the uh, sh command. So, it, it actually it ignores when the shell is executing, you see that it ignores all the commands and executes only those executables that are there inside. So, in this case for example, echo wrong current uh, command is the one and it executes this. Okay. Moving on. Now, until now we have been giving concrete strings as examples. So, in any programming language, you always start off with by declaring a variable and you say that a variable belongs to a particular data type. For example, C belongs to int data type and some string data type, etcetera. But in shell, you need not worry about all this. In one way, it is advantageous in another way it is disadvantageous because if you are very new to shell, then if you do not treat the variables properly, the kind of errors you get, you might even sometimes get frustrated. Okay? So, it is good practice to remember what a variable data type is in your mind okay, before you start writing any shell scripts. The advantage we see is that no need to declare variables beforehand. Therefore, you can just whenever whatever you feel like if you want to introduce a variable, you just introduce it. Okay? So, what we will do is now we will see how we can A, declare variables, not in the real sense of the data type, etcetera, how to assign values to variables and then how to read a variable from a user and how to print the variable. Okay? So, until now we have been printing all strings, so life had been slightly easier. So, let us try to make our life slightly more difficult. So, for this, let us look into the program called variable.sh and then try to understand how variables can be handled. So, in the first case, let, let us start with the line number 1. So, the line number 1 says that I am declaring a variable called int variable. It could be any name. Okay, there are So, what I do is and that name I am assigning a value 5. Okay? Now, you need to be very careful as I told you, uh, if you type like this, it will work. Sometimes, if you go give a space and things like that, I mean be ready for the consequences. Okay? So, you need to be very careful when you type shell scripting, extremely careful. And please use an editor something like this, which actually color codes it, okay? so that even if you make a slight mistake, the color coding will at least help you. Uh, see, for example, once I move, give a space here, if you see the whole 
in, instead of becoming the uh, bluish kind of color, it has become black, which essentially means in a shell script it might lead to some error. Okay, so we, I would suggest that I mean we would suggest that you use a good editor which can point out all these in, in mistakes slightly earlier than when the program is getting executed. So let's recorrect correct this back because it says it's an error. So you need to be very careful that you should not leave any space after you declare this variable that equal to should immediately follow. And even though I have named them as int variable and float variable, they are treated in the same way. Okay. For example, what I have done is, so if you look at this float variable, I have given a value of 5.5 .5 and I am trying to print the float int variable and the float variable. We will come to printing later. The third variable called string variable I have declared okay, so uses something funny which it starts with a dollar symbol and then it has a pwd string. Okay. So if you want to print a value of a variable in shell, you have to precede it with a dollar sign. So that is exactly, so that is the reason if you see in line number 8, we are printing the int, the int variable that we are assigning here, we are printing it by putting a dollar sign in front of the int variable. Okay. So then, you, then I think the rest of the stuff, I think it is easy to follow because for a float variable also, we are printing the dollar sign, I mean we are printing the value by putting a dollar sign in front of the float variable. Similarly, for a string variable, I am putting a dollar in front of string variable 1, string variable 2, 3 and 4. Now this program, okay, first let us run this program and then see the output and then we will go on interpreting the other lines. I think the first part, first two lines are pretty clear. The second line, I think we have been using this quite frequently from, from the last session. Okay. This is actually a string variable. This is a dollar pwd string. We will come to what is dollar pwd, but this we know is string and string variable 2, we have single quote that is there and if you have string variable 3, there is single quote. See, look at the difference. There is a single quote here and these are double quotes. Line number 3 has double quotes. Uh, you need to be extremely careful in shell programming, okay, whether you use single quote or double quote because we will see the interpretation once we run this program. And if you look at this line number 4, we, we have a single quote. Line number 5, we have single quote but within single quote, this dollar pwd has a back quote which is essentially, I mean, uh, so you need to be very careful, it is a back quote. And finally, string variable 4 has double quotes, but still it has dollar pwd within this. So similar to what we have typed here, okay. So probably string variable and string variable 4 both are the same. So probably what we will do is we will just put a back quote here and then see what happens. I think, yeah, I think th this is much better, okay. Now, what we are doing here is in line numbers 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13, we are just printing whatever we have assigned. So let us see what is the result. Okay. So let me run this program as uh, please recollect that we can run this program. Uh, if I put minus x, it will be slightly garbled. So let us run this program just like this and let us follow this. Okay. So so if you look at this, I mean we, we are getting a variables at a stage, there is a, there is, there is a uh, error which says permission denied, okay. It still runs the program. Let us let's, uh, run this in another way, okay, chmod plus x variables dot sh, okay. So line number 6, there is an error. Let us go back and see what is this line number 6, okay. So this is how we debug, okay. So let us go to line number 6. So remember we, we actually changed this to back quote. We will find out why this error occurs. So we will remove this and we will restore the original value and then we will run the program again so that we overcome this error. We will see, I mean all these types of errors you should face so that you can debug it. Okay, fine. So now let us come back to this and if you look at this, okay, it prints 5.5, there is no problem here. If you look at this line, 5 is getting printed which was what we assigned. If you remember this was the int variable. The float variable, it is printing 5.5 and then 
you see we had given dollar PWD, okay. So, PWD is the present working directory, okay, the directory that you are currently in. Now, this is a special type of variable, we will discuss variables in the next session. So, this is PWD and this with when you put that between a double quote, the PWD gets expanded to slash home slash MJS Raman slash IIT Madras slash cell programs, okay. Whereas, when you put it within the single quote, okay, that interpretation is not given. So, if you look at this, the next two strings are printed as it is, that is whatever you type is printed as it is. So, just to show that, I mean, and if you try, if you try to interpret it, uh, so, with, with the last line, if I put it like this, you got an error. So, we found out what that error, I mean, we will we'll find out what that error is, because it has special interpretation and it, it throws out an error. But if you see in this case, essentially when you give a string within double quotes and you give any dollar variable, okay, dollar variable name, then it gets interpreted, okay, the value of the variable is printed. So, that is what you have seen here. Let us go back to the code and uh, just clarify things. So, if you look at this, this the first it, what it printed was 5, everything was fine. The second it printed 5.5, .5, this was okay. The third string variable it actually expanded to slash home and uh, it, it printed MJ's Raman, IIT Madras shell programs. The fourth it just printed as it is, the fifth it also printed as it is. And if you remember this, this text editor actually tells you that okay, this is fine. I mean, that is why it printed this value. And so, now we know how to print uh, a, a, a variable, okay. So, you just have to put a dollar sign in front of it, how to print a string, we have printed it. Now, let us come to the next line, okay. So, here we are saying that we are trying to now, if you look at this, we assign the int variable to be value 5, okay. And then we are trying to say that, okay, int variable is equal to dollar int variable plus 1 and our expectation is that if you have done your programming language, it says that, okay, so I have taken the value of int variable, okay. So, let us take, I, I take the value and remember, look at this, I have put interval vari inter variable and shell still accepts it, okay. So, I put int variable, okay. And and what I am doing is I am just saying plus 1 and then I am putting it as int variable. Let us see what happens because we know that up to this everything is working correctly. Let us see in this case what is happening, okay. So, I will just go and execute this program. So, instead of printing int variable to be, so if you are a normal user and you write a shell program, you will be surprised why this is printing 5 plus 1. And this goes back to whatever I said earlier, see any variable, even though you have named it as int variable, even though it looks like an integer, the shell does not interpret it as an integer. So, it just prints the value of this. So, essentially what you are doing is, you are saying int variable is equal to 5 plus, so it is 5 plus 1. So, now the int variable now holds 5 plus 1, not 6, you know, that is, so it treats the int variable, dollar int variable plus 1 is treated as concatenation of the value of int variable and the plus symbol and the 1. So, as far as the shell is concerned, it is everything is taken as a string, therefore, it concatenates one string after other string and prints it. So, therefore, if you look at this line, it is does not print 6, it prints it as 5 plus 1, okay. And there are ways to make it print as 6. So, if you look at this line, if you see this, it says 5 plus 1 and not 6, okay. Now, what I can do is, now let us try to do, we know how to print the values of variables, we know how to assign values to variables, so all this is fine. Now, let us try to see how we can read values from the user. So, here is an example, line number 19, if you take a look at it, it says let me change the value of int variable and it says echo minus n, okay. So, the idea is if you look at this echo program, echo, echo function or the command, okay, what it does is it just prints let me change the value of the int variable, okay. If you put a minus n option, 
okay then it makes the user interface slightly better let us first remove the minus option and see what is happening and before i go what we do is you can use the read command to read the value of the variable okay so let us now remove the echo minus n and then see what is happens so if i remove echo minus n and then run this so if you look at this so it is asking see i am trying to expect the user input to be given here but because i am not using echo minus n that is it doesn't it has gone into a new line and so it looks bad for a user interface that's all i mean it doesn't carry much other purpose but then it looks very bad for a user interface so if you want to have a good user interface probably you can use uh, echo minus n option okay so what we can do is we can restore back that echo minus n and make it slightly more user friendly so by doing this so let's now execute this again so now it asks for the value next to the semicolon so i can say give some other value and then it prints the value of the integer variable so we are just echoing the value of the integer variable and as i told you if you put it within double quotes you see that you can put it within double quotes so once you put it within double quotes the int variables value that we took here from the user okay is printed okay so this tells you that i mean there are a lot of word of caution that you need to be uh, i mean that you need as i told you at the beginning so one please treat these spaces and i mean even when you are typing whatever we have done showing showing you as demo when you are typing it please concentrate and type second use a good editor which can tell you the problems while typing itself rather than when you interpret the code and see the problem okay third okay give nice comments that's very important fourth ensure that when you read from the user i mean the user interface you can't have a great user interface like uh, uh, what you get in programming languages like java and things like that so at least whatever user interface you try to get using this okay please have a nice clean user interface usually um, in shell scripting you don't prefer a user uh, making it very interactive because the main reason you go for shell scripting is to have a non interactive stuff then why do you want to uh, read user interface i mean a good user interface making it interactive etc so, so you need to be very careful about these things okay so in the next session uh, we will look at how to set some of these variables and what are all the different types of variables that you come across in shell programming